it's time to talk about ADHD and whether you are progressing with this condition or if you are being held captive by it. As someone with ADHD and some other things going on and a business, I wanna share with you some of the strategies that I've developed over the years to help me stay on track and to helpfully forge ahead into my future. If you wanna see how I manage my life and continue to build wealth as a self-employed business owner with ADHD, then today is definitely the video that you're gonna to wanna to watch start to finish. And while you're at it, make sure you're subscribed, give the little thumbs up because not only is it good karma, it also helps me to reach more people so that I can continue to make more videos like this and answer all your questions about this and other topics that you might want me to cover. Welcome or welcome back. My name is Christina Scalera. I am an ADHD, OCD, anxiety type business owner. Like those are all diagnosed conditions that I get to have just, you know, hanging out with. So I'm excited because today, if you are somebody that also suffers with any of these conditions, typically I find that a lot of times People have more than just ADHD going on like myself. And if you're somebody who struggles with these types of things, don't worry, there is some support and some help out there for you. And I'm here to give you my biggest cheerleading effort that I possibly can to help you build the life that you want to have. Now, usually on my channel, I'm covering different passive wealth building strategies from starting a e-commerce shop, which is a term I made up that refers to digital commerces and digital products that you sell to being smarter with the money that you're bringing in, how to forecast in your business, how to build uh, more wealth, how to set yourself up for retirement. And my experience in doing this is as someone who went from $73,000 in credit card debt, I was a severe shopaholic, enter OCD, hello, my poor little thumbs um, are proof every day that I still have this condition and live with it. But I, went from that kind of place where I was very desperate to not even just live. I was lower than living. Like I barely could make, I couldn't make rent actually. <laughs> I got kicked out, um, not evicted per se, but like I just couldn't make the rent on my apartment at that point in my life. And I decided to leave. And so I just forfeited my, my security deposit. I moved in with a friend and um, didn't pay rent for a few months, thankfully, and got myself back on my feet, started my business paid off the $73,000 of debt, and then built it into everything that you see here today as far as my YouTube channel and christinasclera.com. I just sold my e-commerce shop and bought my second house in less than a year. So I bought two houses in less than a year. This is something that you can definitely turn around if you are feeling a little bit hopeless, if you aren't sure if you're gonna make it as someone with ADHD who has a business. Let me be a little beacon of light in your life to show you that there is an alternative reality than you know just feeling overwhelmed and like you don't wanna open your email at all ever anytime. There is a way out of that feeling of struggle and overwhelm. So one of the strategies that I've used successfully to go from that $73,000 of credit card debt to six figures of retirement portfolio savings, all that good stuff and two houses, blah, blah, blah. I'm not trying to be like crass and smooth over all that because it's a lot that I've accomplished and I'm really proud of it, but also I've covered it at length in my videos. So for anybody here that's new, you can go back and watch my other videos where I cover how I got those things in my life. And anybody who's here for just the ADHD stuff, this is one of the strategies I used to overcome that overwhelm that I constantly experienced and to shut out distractions. So here we go. So tool number one, this is actually a tool I started developing before I got an ADHD diagnosis. Like I did not know I had ADHD. I thought I had depression. I went to go see a psychiatrist, uh, a couple psychologists, counselors, therapists. And so I started seeing all these experts and they were the ones who diagnosed me back in 2018. And one of the things that I had done prior to that, that I had used as a coping mechanism, and I didn't even realize this was a coping mechanism because I didn't even realize that I had ADHD, was I started to look for the things that made me feel really overwhelmed. So I started to look for my triggers and I started to try to Christina-proof my life. That's what I thought I was doing at the time. I don't know what your triggers are going to be because ADHD is one of those things that manifests itself differently in every single person. But for me, one of my triggers for overwhelm was my email inbox. And one of the reasons I was getting so overwhelmed was because I would get hit with everything in my inbox and it felt like not just customer support and client support that I had to do, because at the time I had a service-based business and my online store. So I felt like I was constantly drowning and people asking me for different things. And a lot of those things were things that I couldn't just 
fire off a quick email response back for. I had to like go and I look up the blog post and look up the thing I had to recommend to them. So that was something that was very overwhelming for me. And on top of that, my inbox started to turn into my to-do list. So to Christina proof my life, which now is ADHD proofing my life, I used a tool called Airmail. And I believe this is paid. This thing is so worth it because what it allows me to do is I'm able to go and just click on the only inbox that I want to see. So for example, I have about seven different inboxes between my different companies that I've had and my personal stuff. And now I'm like treasurer of my HOA somehow. Anyway, I have all of these listed as different emails. So if I don't wanna look at all the annoying people from my HOA complaining about like plants being spaced wrong in the median or whatever crap it is that they're complaining about, I don't have to check that email inbox. So let me flip the screen around and give you a little demo. This is inside my airmail. And as you can see, I have all my different accounts. So this is my personal account. This is uh, one of my Christina Scalera accounts. This is my contract shop account. And this is another Christina Scalera account. Now I'm not online right now, so if I were, this would fill up with the emails that I have. Uh, but as you can see, you know, it's really helpful. Like if I only want to work on one account at a time, I can just click that inbox or I can click up here for all accounts and it'll show me all the emails in all my accounts. So on those, you know, more stressful days when I only wanna be checking one account at a time for one business or, you know, one area of my business, like if you had a customer support versus a marketing, like you just wanna read, you know, funnel emails and marketing emails, you could just click on that one email and read those emails without seeing everything else. So I find this to be very helpful to literally compartmentalize your email and just make it a lot easier to go through your day in a less stressful, less anxious way. As you can see, that's super helpful because then you can just look like on the weekends, I just look at my personal inbox because that's where all the fun stuff is. That's where I get to see, you know, Colorado news from my CPR newsletter. And I get to see what promos and, and fun things are coming in, you know, like rifle paper is my favorite to look for and just what kind of sale they're running because they're always running a sale. That's where I get to just kind of look at the fun stuff and ignore all the work stuff on the weekends. So that helps to cut down on some of that overwhelm. And then I can go inbox by inbox to choose what I want to focus on next. And if like today is just not a client day, or if it's just not a shop day, which right now it hasn't been a shop day in a while because I sold my shop, but there could be something else coming out in that regard soon. So if today just isn't a client day, or if today just isn't a shop day, I don't have to look in that particular inbox until it's time to do so. So that has really helped me out a lot. Another example of me, Christina proofing, AKA ADHD proofing my life is I would always be late to everything, like everything. And it drives people crazy and it hurt my relationships and it was really interfering with my life because not only do clients expect you to show up on time, I know this sounds really obvious to anybody, like to anybody that doesn't have ADHD, they're like, what the, you didn't show up to your client appointments on time? What is wrong with you? But to anybody who has ADHD, you know, you know, when it's 9.58, and your client meeting is at 10 a.m., you have time to go to the bathroom and put on makeup and get some tea and a coffee. It, it's bad news. <laughs> like, you just know. So one of the things that I did in my life was the clocks that you have in your house, right, that you're, like, looking at the microwave or the stove or whatever. I would just change the time, and I wouldn't look as I did it, and I just made sure that it was ahead, but I didn't know by how much. So every clock in my house is different and wrong and they're all ahead of time. But then when I sit down at my computer to get on the client call that I think I'm two minutes late for already, I'm actually four minutes early. So this sounds probably crazy to normal neurotypical people, but this has been a game changer. I've done it in my car, I've done it on my computer, basically anywhere I can do it, I do this. Another way this shows up is if I have an appointment for 9.30, I always schedule it at 9.15 or at 9.20. So if I have an appointment across town and I have to be there by 9.30, but my, my calendar says 9.20, I already forgot a long time ago that it was only 9.30. So I show up and I'm, you know, 10 minutes early instead of being perpetually 15 minutes late to everything and like just barely getting in under the grace period. Trust me, it's a lot less stressful when you are actually 
somewhere on time and even early. Even though I am not a professional, these are things that I've found that have really helped me in my life. So I hope that you can start to notice what kind of triggers and patterns you find yourself falling into. And then, you know, insert your name here, proof your life, like Christina proof your life. <laughs> So the second strategy I use is just to shift my narrative. And this is actually something I find really easy to do because I just constantly forget that I have ADHD. Like I don't even know how many bottles of Adderall in my house. My husband was like, you have what? I'm like, yeah, I just forget to take it. So I haven't taken my Adderall in a long time. I know that's a question I get a lot is like, have you tried medicine? What have you tried? What are you taking now? The answer is I'm not taking anything right now except for coffee, lots of coffee every single day because I kept losing my Adderall and now apparently there's a shortage or whatever. Like it's just, it's too much for me to handle. And with Adderall being a controlled substance, I hate the inquisition that I get at the pharmacy where they'll be like, we don't have it. And I'm like, I know you have it. I called today, you had it. And they're like, well, we didn't want to fill it. Cause they, they can just like not do that. It's a controlled substance. I found this out the hard way. Cause if you forget where your bottle of Adderall is and you go to order another one, so that you have two, but like actually you just have one, they're gonna see that you have like more than your month's supply and they're like, whoa, we're in danger. This person's abusing this substance, which probably happens very frequently, which is why they have these rules in place. But for someone like me who would, you know, go on a trip and forget my Adderall, which I'm constantly traveling, I'm here in Colorado at my new house. I mean, I forgot my Adderall back in Washington. Okay, fine. Like, now I'm here, so I just, I can't, I can't keep up with the pharmacy and all these regulations. So I'm just back to drinking a lot of coffee. Holy cow, this is like such an ADHD tangent. Because what I was actually talking about is the fact that you have to rewrite your narrative and make sure that you're taking care of yourself. If that means that you forget that you have ADHD, like I'm constantly forgetting that it's even a thing. People will send me memes and I'm like, oh yeah, I do have that. Like, I just, I do not remember it. It's not my identity. ADHD doesn't make or break me as a human being. That was easy for me to rewrite as a narrative because getting diagnosed with it helped to answer a lot of questions and show me why some of the things were happening in my life the way that they were, but it didn't define me. Like I don't have like ADHD, I feel like written across my forehead. If you do feel that way and it helps you to cope, it helps you to join like different groups and to talk to people about your ADHD and to see what kind of things they're doing that help them. Like that's wonderful, that's amazing. But know that it's always a possibility for you to rewrite whatever narrative, whatever stories it is that you're telling yourself about your ADHD or about what you can or cannot do because you have ADHD. So if I listen to a lot of like the TikToks and the experts and whatever out there about ADHD, I should not be as successful as I am. However, going back to strategy one, I think the fact that I have Christina proofed my life and also learned that when I get in that flow state of like hyper-focus, hyper-activity, that I should run with it. I started to embrace that. I used to fight that a lot. And so that was like the narrative that I had at the time was that I should be normal. I should go to bed at 10 o'clock if that's my bedtime. I should not wake up at 4 a.m. if I get an idea and I wanna run with it. And now I've thrown all of that out the window. I've rewritten my narrative to be more healthy for me. And if I get something really cool that I am excited about working on, I'll stay up until two in the morning working on it, just trusting that I'm gonna stay in that flow state. If something pops into my head at 4 a.m., I have no shame in pulling up my phone and just typing out a quick idea and then going back to sleep. So make sure that you are acknowledging what you need to, but not so much that it is becoming an unhealthy identity for yourself, just because Sometimes that can tend to be a little crutch that you use to explain away what's going on or why you're awkward or something like that. Honestly, I think we should all embrace being awkward a little bit more, especially when other people are awkward around us. Like, who cares? Just be like, yeah, that was kind of awkward. I'm awkward too, like whatever. That was weird that we thought we were talking about something different and we totally weren't. Like actually right now, this is getting a little awkward. But I really wish people would just be more of themselves. And I think you're a lot more endearing and genuine when you do talk to people about that side of yourself. Or if you are feeling a certain way, um, instead of covering it up or something, instead of just saying like, oh, that's just my ADHD, like just embrace it. A good example of this is that sometimes I will be in the car or at home with my husband and I'll say something and he's like, what? And I'm like, I said that out loud, didn't I? And he's like, yeah, you did. I'm like, oh, shoot. 
<laughs> so just embracing that sometimes those things happen, acknowledging them and then moving past that instead of lingering. And again, letting that get ingrained as like part of you and your identity, because you are not your ADHD. If you want to be okay, fine. But like, I don't think that's a healthy place to be. So strategy number three is making sure you have enough time and space to physically and mentally recharge. And for me, this looks like going outside on a hike every single evening, even if I'm in my neighborhood in Washington, which is very suburban, walking around that neighborhood and just kind of trying to be out in nature as much as possible. I don't know what your recharge button is gonna look like, but that for me helps a lot. I find that pretty much across the board, whether or not you wanna admit it, Physical activity is a huge, huge helper when you have ADHD. So if you can walk, if you can ride your Peloton, if you can do five minutes of yoga, like whatever activity you can actually engage in, even a tiny amount of activity is going to be really helpful for you to maintain focus and accomplish what you need to do each week because, you know, like it or not, we don't live in a world that's adapted to non-neurotypical people or disabled people, which is very unfortunate, but these are some of the coping mechanisms that I've used to help me fit in a little bit more and just be like a little bit more focused and less hyperactive. One thing that's been really hard, and I think it's because I have anxiety and OCD with my ADHD, is getting in some kind of community. Like I naturally resist that part of it is because I travel, but I actually think I travel a lot to like use that as an excuse. Like, oh, I travel so much. I don't have time to like do this thing or join this group. But that is actually so helpful. So just know that some of the coping recharging methods that you might need in your life aren't necessarily things that you enjoy doing. Like for me, I love getting a massage, but I find that around the 45 minute mark, I'm like, okay, time to leave. Like I start getting really antsy. So I usually just book the 60 minute massages and that way it like, you know, the like time to leave is, is at the right time versus like the 90 minutes. Another part of this recharging is also creating some kind of safe environment, some kind of safe space in your house. So for example, at my Washington house, everything is still torn apart because we're doing like a slow flip. We're living in it while we're also like, we just had their kitchen redone. None of our doors have casing. So we're redoing all the door casings and the baseboard. Like it's a, it's a whole thing. But what I did in that house is I just created a safe space. And oftentimes I find myself sitting in my car for extra long before I go into my house, just because that feels like such a safe, like safe haven, safe space for me. As far as, you know, no one can like really get to me there. Like there's not, calls that are happening. It's like a nice, pleasant place to listen to music and podcasts and things I enjoy. So even if it is just your car, cause your house or your kids or your dog or whatever is so messy and annoying, then you can just take some time, go to your car, let it be your safe space, your Zen space, where you can just have five minutes to yourself. A lot of moms also tell me their safe space is the bathroom cause they can lock the door <laughs> and enjoy just like five minutes of quiet, uh, peace and quiet to themselves. And you know, their partner doesn't bother them necessarily because they see it's the, the closed bathroom door. So whatever you have to do, but you do have to take care of yourself and you do have to give yourself these moments every single day. This isn't like something you can just like sit in your bathroom for 60 minutes on Saturday and call it good. You need to do this for yourself every single day. So take some time to find whatever that place is for you, whether it's outdoors, it's your car, it's a little nook in your home that you've decorated very beautifully for yourself. These are all things that are very, they seem really minor, but they actually make a huge difference in terms of controlling any kind of like overwhelm or anxiety that might be cropping up from your ADHD. As a business owner, I also find that if I do not give myself this time and this physical space to myself, I do not perform as well as a coach, as a mentor, as someone here making these YouTube videos. And I definitely don't come out with good ideas for new offers unless I am able to have these safe spaces and containers for myself. I need a lot of that white space, sometimes I call it, to create these things. And if I cannot, absolutely cannot find this anywhere in my life, it's like that feeling where you have to get out and get a vacation. Well, first of all, that's not always practical. So I kind of force this to happen in my life by going to a really cute, fancy restaurant and bringing a notepad or notebook with me, ordering whatever I want and just spending some time there to make sure that I am 
downloading whatever is coming my way, things that have like been building up in my brain for a little while, getting that down onto paper. And then I can distill that down into, you know, future courses or products or client offerings that I have on my brain. Okay, so strategy number four is a huge one and has made such a big difference in my life. It's how I went from completely broke at 31, spending every dollar I made back in my business and not spending anything on myself, having no savings, no safety net, no retirement, to now multiple six figures of retirement, a just about like maybe eight, nine, 10 months of an emergency fund, two houses, three cars, two dogs, very expensive dogs that like to have medical problems. <laughs> So that is how I, I went from this place of lack to this place of uh, very full, rich, maybe even abundant life is by setting goals. And it wasn't that I necessarily set a goal and then like poof, it happened. It often showed up very differently than I thought it would. And this is something I've really been experimenting with a lot. I like to call it my miracle list. So one thing that I've done before any major change in my life is map out a list of what I want that change to look like. So a week before I met my husband, I was not planning on dating. I just like was having my best, you know, single hot girl life in the mountains of Colorado, living it up actually in the same county that I bought in. And I made a list one morning because I just, I felt like it. Again, going back to that white space, it's really important. Some of these downloads just come through and you have to get them out onto paper or into your computer or whatever that looks like. That was one of those moments. So I wrote down this list. I think I had like 30 something qualities in a person that I wanted uh, as far as a partner or a spouse goes. And actually it was funny because I looked back, none of them were physical, like not a single one was physical, but these qualities, I'm not even kidding you. Less than a week later, my husband walks into my life and I could just go down the list and be like, yes, 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 yes. It was so easy to see that he was the right fit for me. And the same thing happened prior to that when I found the condo that I had previously lived in in the county here. And what that looked like was I, I listed out all the things that I wanted this place to have that would feel really like just yummy and dreamy. And I didn't think it was possible because to be honest, like this county in Colorado, it's like up in the mountains. A lot of the stuff looks like rural mountain town, like, you know, lots of bear, moose decor, like lodgy feeling. And so I didn't want that. I wanted something like the house that I have now where it's very bright and airy and lots of natural light and high ceilings and all this right, beautiful, like hard countertops that um, some kind of like stone with like an easy, nice flowing kitchen, like lots of these things, a view of the mountains, right? Cause that's not always something that you automatically get just because you're in the mountains. And I made this list, this miracle list. And I'm not even kidding. Less than a month later, I was able to see the perfect place pop up. And that was the catalyst for moving into the place of my dreams, what I thought was my dreams up here. And then again, a little bit later doing my miracle list to manifest my husband or whatever. I don't actually think it's manifesting. I think it's something else, but if you want me to cover that, I'll do that in a different video. And then I did the same exact thing for our house in Washington. I did the same exact thing for this house here. So every single time that I have created one of these miracle lists and gotten really clear on what it is that I wanted to have in my life, those things showed up and they didn't always show up how I thought they were going to look, right? Like my husband uh, didn't look the way that I thought my husband, you know, whoever was my future partner or husband, I didn't think that it would look like him, but I love him and he's adorable and he's the cutest little thing to me. So, you know, same thing with my dog, same thing with this house. It's just, there were things that I had pre-written in my mind and then like how it came to be, did, it, it looked exactly like the list, you know, but it didn't look exactly like how I thought it would be in my head. So if you are having trouble with your ADHD or growing your business with your ADHD, then maybe it's time for you to start one of these miracle lists and write out exactly what you want to see in your business for next month, for next year, for this year, <laughs> for tomorrow. So start writing this out and let me know if this is something that makes a difference in your life. If you do one of these miracle lists and you see it come to fruition, I would love to know how this worked out for you and you know what that looked like compared to what you wrote down. These miracle lists aren't like some magic manifestation tool. It's more about getting that clarity that we so often just kind of skip over. Like we're like, yeah, yeah, we know what we want. We know what we want. But when it actually comes time to write this stuff down and we start 
putting pen to paper, it becomes immediately obvious that we have to be even more specific with what we're looking for. So the magic isn't so much like in the universe, it's more in your head and your brain and in the actual neurological process that it takes to figure out what you want to write down on the piece of paper. And once it's written down, the really cool thing is you have an exact map to follow to reach your goals. You know exactly what you need to be looking for and every single thing on your list could be something that you're working towards accomplishing, could be a goal in and of itself. So I really don't know what to call ADHD. I don't know if it's like an illness or a disability or whatever, but I just actually think of it as my superpower. So while I might not be the right vibe for everybody who's watching this, especially anybody who is watching this and you don't have ADHD, like you're probably like this girl is all over the place. But if you do, and you know what it's like to have 17 thoughts at once and not know how to get it out, or like you just have to interrupt someone because you're going to forget that thought, then this is a safe space for you. And I'm so glad you came along with me. You listened to the strategies I'm using to cope with all this stuff. And hopefully it gave you some insider, like literally inside my brain secrets that can help you as you're building your own business. And if you want something a little bit more tangible in my next video, I'm going to walk you through what my schedule looks like with ADHD. So if you're someone like me who loves looking at what someone's morning routines are, or if you just like think the secret to success is in someone's schedule, then you're going to love that video. And it's just popping up on your screen now. So click over there, watch that. And if not, then later, I will see you soon. Take care. Please like, please subscribe. It makes a huge difference. And if you would be so kind, please leave a comment and let me know what you thought of this video. I will see you soon.